All right, welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are viewing this video. It's Mr. Eric or Mr. Griffin back with another origami lesson. Now, this one I thought I would decide to do a more, um, it's funny, I was going to use the word international um, because this is uh, origami and it would be international anyways. But this special little froggy, um, and it is a frog if you can't tell, looks kind of like frog. And if I pull back over here, it jumps off the screen. Kind of fun to do. Um, this is kind of like an international traveler for us because both me and my wife have actually taken this design and we've taught people uh, around the world how to do this. I first took this and some of the other origami pieces and I got to teach um, some Honduran uh, civil, uh, citizens and some students in Honduras how to do this whenever we went on a mission trip. And then I actually taught my wife how to do this and she took the whole design and a whole bunch of people got to teach at a Haitian school in Haiti and teach them how to do this. And they said it was really fun watching the kids uh, jump their little frogs and have frog hopping competitions. So I thought I'd go ahead and share this with you. Now, for those of you who are wondering, I teach this lesson to my fourth graders. So it should be easy enough to follow along. Uh, and hopefully, even if you have a little lower ones, maybe being able to watch this video and having me talk about it when you pause it might be able to get them as well. So what you need, once again, as always, you need a piece of paper. Uh, I think I've done this piece of paper with a little bit thicker. So if you do have construction paper, it might work. The problem with construction paper is the fibers are a little bit thicker uh, and whenever you fold them so many times it gets kind of hard to get a good hop on it. But I still like origami paper or regular printer paper if you would like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of paper. It should be square. You can actually do this, I believe, with a rectangular piece of paper. You don't have to have it square. But if you have a square piece of paper, we're going to fold it in half first to get our rectangle. And I'm going to do white side up, and then I'm going to fold in half. Now, the way Mr. Griffin or Mr. Eric always does it, and I've done this in some of my other videos, I match my first two corners. Now, once I match my corners and I'm happy with them, I pinch it right there. And then I don't have to look at anything else. If you have your corners matched up, the line and pulling on it should be nice and neat. I have so many students who try to fold their piece of paper and they take it and they they take the paper and they're taking all their hands and they get all off and everything i try to tell them just match it up with the corners uh once you got your corners matched pinch it and don't let go then you can just go down the line uh and get it nice and neat like so all right so now that we have this corner i've seen this instruction of the frog done before you can probably find this online um they don't fold this line in half, but I have found teaching my fourth graders, it doesn't hurt the end result, uh, what I do, but I like to do this because it helps my fourth graders know where to fold the next step. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our long skinny rectangle, rectanger, rectanger, I don't know if you guys heard that, I heard it, um, but you're going to fold your rectangle in half now, once again, matching up those corners. And like I said, I, I've said this before, if you match these corners, sometimes this part gets all kind of wonky. I like to tell my students to match the corners, pull on that little section so it kind of loosens up the fibers of the paper, and then you can crease it down. Now that was just our helper fold. That's to give us where our middle line is, okay? Now from here, you're gonna think of each of these sides of the rectangle as a square. And you're going to fold an X inside each of these. So you're basically going to fold the left side up to the middle. And you're going to fold the right side up to the middle. And you're going to make an X fold. So watch how I do this. Now you cannot fold it and then fold the other side. You have to fold and unfold. So I'm going to take my left side first. Hopefully my hat won't get in the way. I have the not the best eyesight, so I have to get a little closer. So I fold this up here and crease it down. Now, that's the first fold. 
I then unfold it, and now I'm going to fold the right side now, making that X. Now, if you notice, my right side has two layers of paper. You're going to take both layers of paper and fold that up like so, matching those edges, matching it right next to that seam that we had, and crease it down. I kind of like to go slow. If you're going faster than me, that's fine. But if you have an X, then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it around and you're going to do the X on the other side. Now, I'm going to take my left side, fold it right up next to that seam. Then you're going to do the right side. Once again, the right edge of the bottom of that square. I got actually kind of in a meditated state. I felt like I wasn't talking. But uh, if you've been watching these origami videos, guys, I tell you this every time. Origami is just a way to meditate and calm your mind. So all of us right now are in this quarantine together. Um, some people or lost their jobs. So this is an opportunity for us to just calm, relax, and just take the moment that we have right in front of us and enjoy. So if you've done this, you've got these little X's and everything. Now, what we're going to do, this is very important. You need to take your origami and you need to flip it upside down. Now it looks like you kind of have little peaks, kind of like standing up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom edge and the top edge and we're going to fold it into the center. Now, some might say, does it matter? Yes, it matters, because the next thing we're going to make like an accordion. So this is what we just did. Make sure that you fold it on top of them like this. Then once you have done this, you flip it upside down. So you should have these little peaks. And now you're going to fold the top and bottom right to the center edge again. Make sure you're getting it to the center. Don't stop early. Don't stop after. So you get right to the edge. And you crease it down. Okay. I'm going to do the bottom, or now it's the top or bottom, I don't know. Fold that right next to the edge, right next to the center. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to open it up slightly, and now we're going to flip it upside down again. And notice how I've actually turned it long ways for us. Now, here's what's really fun. I say, everyone say, two fingers. I didn't hear you. Everyone say, two fingers. All right, I think I heard some of you guys. Now you're going to put your two fingers right on the top of those little peaks, and you're just going to go boop, and you're going to push it, and it's going to make like in a little accordion. And I want you to say boop. It makes it more fun. So everyone take it, two fingers, and we go boop, boop. All right. Now see, if you looked at this, it kind of like popped up. It's. I think this looks cool as it is. If this was like just done, I think it would be great. But it like makes this little accordion thing. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these folds that we have now, and they're all going in the correct direction, and I'm going to go ahead and collapse them in on themselves. Now, I know some of you guys are like, Mr. Griffin, I didn't see that. Okay, watch. You're going to take it. After it boops and it gets this little shape, you're going to kind of collapse it in using those folds that you have, and you're going to make like a little triangle. Okay? Watch me do it again. I'm going to try my, just, my best to just use one finger or something. Oops, didn't work. All right, so I'm going to try my best to show you it just kind of collapses in on themselves, okay? Now we've got a little square. Now I like to turn it like this. So I have the seam going left and right because what we're going to do is we're going to do some things to the triangle, okay? So now that was the hardest part. The, less, the rest of it's just going to be smaller folds and making our frog. So we're going to take this. I sometimes use this uh, as a geometry lesson as well. You've got a top triangle and a bottom triangle, and you've got three vertices. So you got three vertices. What we're going to do is we're going to take vertice A, and we're going to take vertice B, and we're going to connect them to vertice C. So watch what I do. I know that was too much for you. That's what Mr. Griffin does in his classroom. He tries to talk about vertices and angles. So watch what I do. I'm going to take the right side, and I'm going to pull it up to the left or the center up to the center, and up to the top vertice, or a top corner, okay? So watch me do it one more time. I just took the bottom, and I just folded it straight up. That's pretty easy, right? I probably didn't have to use all that other language, but, you know, we're all learning. Now I'm going to take the left side, 
Once again, I'm going to take the left vertice, pull it up to the top vertice, our top corner. I'm going to fold it like that. Now, I'm not done over here. I'm going to have to do something else. Now we've got two more smaller triangles. I don't want you to think of this as a full square now, but look at this middle edge. You see this long edge? I bet some of you guys with triangles know the actual term for the longest edge, but if you don't, I don't, So, or I've forgotten. Um, but you're going to take this long edge, and you're going to fold this triangle in half, and it should match up with this angle or this edge. So watch. I'm going to fold this triangle in half, pull it out, and kind of match it up to that ledge. I think my fat fingers got in the way. So here we go. Middle edge, fold it out to that edge. Normally, whenever I'm doing this at school, I zoom in each time because it gets kind of small, but can't seem to zoom in on this. So watch. Now I'm going to take the other side, middle edge, and fold it right out. I like to think of this as like a samurai hat. So if you look at this, it kind of looks like a samurai hat. Well, we made one samurai hat. Now we need to make the other one. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm now going to take this triangle, and I'm going to fold it up, the vertices up to the center point. And then the left vertice up to the center point. And then the long side or edge, I'm going to fold it out to this little edge over here, making my samurai hat. Fold this one out, making my samurai hat. So I've got two samurai hats. And now, this is going to be hard. I do this in my class all the time. So... I try to talk about how this is a meditation. It creates an enormous sense of calm. It, it calls for a zen-like form of concentration. This is what I get from all my fourth graders. Woo, look, I made a top. Look, it spins. Don't spin it. That's going to be too confusing. Don't spin it. Now, if you leave it like this, we should have a seam going from left to right. Now, this is how I want it because if you do it the other way, and if you, if you do this next step, trying to fold, it might not work. So let's not spin it. Do it just like Mr. Griffin. He's got this seam going left and right. Now, I'm going to flip it completely upside down. So watch how I do it. Slowly but surely, seam going straight up and down. Now, I should be able to see my fold going from my left to my right still. Correct? If you have your crease going from top to bottom, don't do that you got to make sure it's going from left and right, because otherwise the next fold that I'm going to do might be confusing to you. Okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. I see a square. I do not see a good fold from the top corner to the bottom corner. There's no seam. So we've got to use our imagination, pretend there's an imaginary line right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the right edge of this square, the right edge of this square, and I'm going to fold it into the imaginary line that I have, kind of like an airplane fold. Don't go past this corner. So I'm going to fold it so it's straight up and down like a, like a kite again or like an airplane fold. And I'm going to do the left side. Now, match them up. Don't overlap them. Okay? Now, I know that might have been a little tricky in some of you guys. Might have been saying, mine won't do it. Well, if you're just saying mine won't do it, then you're trying to do the wrong angle and it won't work. So you got to make sure that it's doing it like this. You take the right edge and left edge and fold it right into the center. There's no line. There's no like cheating thing that we can help and guide it to it. So you kind of just have to pay attention. All right. For right now, we've got this. It looks like a torpedo. Looks kind of like a cicada bug or something. But we're not done. We're going to make them the frog. Now, if you see this triangle down at the bottom... Everyone give me a thumbs up. All right. So we're going to take this triangle. We're going to leave the legs. These are our legs of our frogs. You're going to leave these legs of the frogs, and you're only going to take this triangle and fold it over these little flappers. Okay? Make sure you take all that triangle. Now, don't start curling up your legs, so don't go too far. I'm going to take my triangle, and I'm going to fold it right over the flappers. Okay? Now, everyone say serious. Serious. Now, if you look right here, that little triangle that I just put in here, it has these little pockets. You guys see those pockets? Now, I'm not talking about just behind it. I'm talking about literally inside that triangle, there are pockets. Okay, here's what you're going to do. 
you're going to take your flappers and you're going to stick your flappers inside those pockets. Now, if you're asking, Mr. Griffin, is that the technical term for those? Yes, yes, it is. Look it up. I'm joking. I don't think it is. But I like flappers. I like pockets. I'm going to stick that flapper inside my pocket. Now, I'm not done, but as I stuck those flappers inside the pocket, I'm going to now slowly squash it down. Okay. Now, this is locking our frog into place. This is locking our froggy into place. So I've got those pockets with the flappers inside of it. Now, you've got a flattened frog. We're going to take our frog, turn it upside down. Belly up is what I like to say. Belly up. Make the frog go belly up. Now, you should be able to see that seam again. This is going to be the first, and it's going to be the easy fold. It's going to get harder, but there's only two more steps. So watch. First, fold your froggy in half so your legs are com are folded right on top of each other. So you got this folded up. My legs should be right on top of each other. Now, I just threw that pencil away, but I want you guys to look. Do you guys see this trapezoid? If you don't know what a trapezoid is, it's got two parallel lines, and then it's got these angled lines. So it's kind of like a bottom half of a triangle or something, but there's a trapezoid. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this triangle in half, or this trapezoid in half. So this top edge is going to lay right on top of this bottom edge. Now, you're going to have to still grab these bottom feet. So watch what I do. I stick my thumbs in here, and I kind of bend it, I bend it, and I fold that froggy in half, okay? I fold those that trapezoid in half on top of itself. Now, that's going to be the hardest fold that we do just because it's so much paper, okay? Now, if you have that, you should be able to flip it upside down. And then we should have a froggy that looks kind of like this. And then you should be able to take your finger and you pull it straight back. You kind of put your finger right on top of its back and you kind of pull it back a little bit whoop, and then let it go. Let's see if this guy pull it back a little bit and let it go. I don't know who won. Let's see it again. That one went pretty far. Oh, he looked jumped way over. So here's what's really fun. These will get better hoppers once the fold gets back up. So this one is the one I did earlier. The fold's already kind of like stiffer now. So it's like, oh, look at it go. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's going way off the paper. Awesome. And this guy, he'll jump over here. See if he can jump way over here. You think he can meet it over here? Let's go. Whoop! Oh, he went way far. All right, I'm having fun. I hope you guys have fun. I hope you make these. See if you guys can get you, your brother, your sister, or maybe your mom and dad, and you guys can create a little frog hopping competition. So, love you guys. Be safe. Wash your hands. See you next time.